a Nikon D500. Here's my very first impressions of it. It's got a flippy out screen, which I'm not a huge fan of normally. Two buttons you don't need on the top of your camera. Effectively, I can control in manual all the settings with one hand. I like that! Ooh, I like that a lot! So, okay, in terms of car analogies, straight away, this feels like a BMW M5. And the sensor, from what I've been hearing, is like a BMW. So you're still getting like a 500 horse, 550 horsepower engine. And this feels camera wise like a BMW M5 mode oh wait a minute can I change aperture while recording uh, okay if I start recording can I change aperture I can change shutter speed good and I can change aperture yes can I change ISO boom all while recording can I even focus <gasps> touch screen touch screen focusing I was in oh it's shooting in 4k <sighs> right are the only cameras from Nikon that I would totally recommend. Yeah, that, this is just my first impressions. Well controlled shutter mechanism. It, did I just take a photo? Button, ah, oh, like that. Ah, okay, menu screens I can't touch there. Quiet mode, I would say you're not gonna use that very often. Oh, it's just right, it's just right. ISO button, exposure compensation, record button there, perfect. AF on button, brilliant. The two info buttons, I understand. Feel this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. I'm trying to, stay, I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to stay cool on this one. This feels like a camera that you could happily be using for five, six years. This, then the D810. I don't like. I don't. This, this feels breakable. You can, I can happily finger this camera with one finger. That feels very comfortable. It's not coming off my finger. Here I have with me <coughs> um, a Nikon D500. This is the, effectively the first time I've ever felt, seen, held, going to use a Nikon D500. Here's my very first impressions of it. Before I, before I really go into the impression of this, I'm going to use, I'm going to use car analogies. So, for example, this is a APS-C size sensor camera or you could put an extra battery pack on the bottom. It's a 20 megapixel um, thing, and uh, and it's the latest one that's out. It's got a flippy out screen, which I'm not a huge fan of normally. Still not a huge fan of that. It just, just feels like something that's gonna break. Just a like, it's just a bit clicky. Just a bit clicky, ah, ah, but, Ooh, lots of buttons at the side. Quality, white balance, two buttons you don't need on the top of your camera. You always shoot raw, and your white balance doesn't matter because you're shooting raw. Your exposure metering, that's, that's handy to have there. And your mode, mode is there. Okay, ISO is there. Okay, so am I able to change? So yeah, oh brilliant, I like that. So I can change ISO, I can change uh, so I need to go there for mode, but if I'm in manual, change aperture, change shutter speed, it goes up to 8,000th of a second shutter speed. Hallelujah, it's not restricted to 4,000th. 4,000th, four, four oh, I can't even say it. Um, and effectively, I can control in manual all, all the settings with one hand. I like that! Ooh, I like that a lot! That's a good thing. Well done, Nikon, for that bit. This bit here, I'm a big fan of. Quality and white balance, take those away and make those two bits, those two buttons, a lot bigger. That would be good. Focusing is done with pressing of the button down at the autofocus, and you've got autofocus single, continuous, spot, group, auto, group, blah, blah, lots of 3D, 153D, 7225, single. Uh, I'll put it on 
EFS, autofocus single, and put it on single shot. So it's just always in the middle. Uh, to get the back on, press live view. Take off a lens cap, that would help. And focuses quite quickly in live view. Certainly with this lens, this is the 16 to 80 millimeter, which is incredibly compact. Um, I like that a lot. Okay. Uh, so, ah, okay. The light, yeah. So you, if you're changing modes, you need two hands for that. So, okay. In terms of car analogies. I loved the Nikon D300. The D300 was a fantastic camera, great body, considered professional even by Nikon standards. If you wanted to be part of the Nikon professional repair team or whatever it was, you needed to have a, a, or a D300 was considered one of the professional ones. Since then, Nikon have made a lot of crap. Uh, they made a D600, oil splatters everywhere, they made a D610 still restricted in a lot of the kind of why can't I change aperture in video mode oh wait a minute can I change aperture while recording hold on let's let's test that one out have the restricted this in any way so I go into light I go into video I start recording I'm in manual oh no I'm not in the, I'm not in the right mode can't change mode okay stop stop get into manual mode live view Oh, what the heck? This is a 60mm f2.8. That's good. Then when you zoom in, it goes to f4. Loving that lens. 16 2.8. Nice. Okay, anyway. Uh, okay, if I start recording, can I change aperture? I can change shutter speed. Good. And I can change aperture. Yes! Can I change ISO? Boom! All while recording. Can I even focus? Touch screen, touch screen focusing. Oh, even while oh, let's see, click that to turn it off. Oh, oh, right, loving, loving that, loving that a lot. Uh, oh, I'm even in. What was I in? I was in. Oh, it's shooting in 4K. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, my car, car, anal car analogies. So Nikon made the D600. 610 and the 750. I would say the sensor in those are fantastic. The sensor in those I would consider to be like a Ferrari 458 engine. So if we consider a car engine to be the sensor, the Nikon D600, 610, D750, all the same sensor, was like a Ferrari 458 engine, but in bodies which were not Ferrari. It, it was more like... Like the body of the D610 was really a toy. It was it was a throwaway body. It was like a a Volkswagen Golf. That's what I would call it. Not dissing Volkswagen Golf golfs because because I'm in one just now. But it's like you had a Ferrari engine in a Volkswagen. You're like no nah, no good. The then the D750 came out slightly better body, flippy out screen. I would say that's like. A Ferrari engine in a slightly better car, so maybe like a in a Jaguar XE kind of thing. Uh, the Nikon D 800, 810. That was more like that. That was so awesome and had a fantastic body. That was like a Pagani Zonda engine in a Pagani Zonda. Okay, so that's the D 810 Pagani Zondas. The D 600, 610, 750 Ferrari engine. Crap cars, crap bodies. Nikon in its APS-C size sensors, so what we call crop size sensors, Nikon's just pumped out crap since the Nikon D300. D300, fantastic body. Then it brought out the 3000, the 5000, the 7000, so a ranges of crap, I would say, like, like a, what's that, a Toyota, the 3000 was like a Toyota iGo. Um, the 5000 was a Volkswagen Golf and the 7000 was more like a BMW 3 Series. Okay, let's say that. Um, but the sensors in there were fantastic. Uh, there was 24 megapixel fantastic sensors. So again, the engines of the cars were, let's say that was like a BMW M5 engine 
in a Toyota Igo, in a Volkswagen Golf, and in a maybe a BMW 3 Series. You know, wasn't quite up to the same level. This, straight away, this feels like a BMW M5. And the sensor, from what I've been hearing, is like a BMW. So you're still getting like a 500 horse, 550 horsepower engine. And this feels, camera-wise, like a BMW M5. With a hatchback rear. That's what I would call it. So that's my car analogies of this. This feels like a bulletproof BMW M5. It is festooned with buttons at the back. AF on, thank goodness. Oh, oh, can I do? I have, yep, full AF on, and I can still do half press there. I like that. Can I do that while in video? So in video, I can do back focusing. And half focus, and, and a half button press there. Liking that, so it's just, seems like Nikon has definitely on the right things with this. It's saying, let's see what continuous high sounds like. Uh, let's see. Yikes. Yikes. That's, that is a, that's a machine gun. That is an absolute machine gun. I did not just take 80 photos there. No, hold on. Okay, I'm at 80. Let's see. Two. Three, four, five. How many photos am I up to now? 120. 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Yeah, that was, that was around about 10, 10 photos a second there or something like that. Oh, awesome. Okay, what I will say, <laughs> that, was, that was nice. But also, fairly quiet, well-controlled shutter mechanism. It wasn't totally like... <laughs> It, it felt quite, quite controlled. Yeah, you are still feeling a little bit of the vibration because that is fierce. But uh, it's like, for example, when I was using the Nikon D3 and the D4, boom, 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 boom is how it felt. This, maybe because it's, it's a much uh, smaller mirror um, and, and also with a, a much smaller um, shutter, um, those are two different things within the camera. So it's a much less uh, explosions going on inside the camera. That sounds pretty good. Um, okay, uh, yeah, festooned with buttons. Button, button, menu, key, magnifying glass, reverse magnifying glass, okay, FN2, FN2, info, info, two info buttons. Is there not a way that they could have, like, chilled that one out? I think one of them will, if you put it in live view, if, I, ah yes, I can choose image area, active delighting, monitor brightness, cool, and if I press the other info button, that gives me whether I've got, um, oh, I like, what do you call that, the level, the, the spirit level, that's cool. Did I just take a photo? I just took a photo, did it? It did! I'm at 140 now. 140? Oh wow, okay, this is... This is uh, info, 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 nice. Nice, I haven't even gone into the menu settings, they seem good. Okay, button, ah, oh, like that. Oh, oh yeah, menu screens. Ah, okay, menu screens I can't touch there. That's, that's a bummer. Now, what does quiet, quiet continuous mode sound like? Let's hear that. Not very quiet, still very loud, but much less uh, noise of it. Let's hear it again. That's, that's still quite noisy. Quiet mode, I would say, you're not gonna use that very often. Oh no, it, it, well, yeah, no. Quite single, and then you walk away and undo that. Um, definitely better than the full frame versions in terms of its sound, of, of its noise. It's just right, it's just right. 
this is right. ISO button, exposure compensation, record button there, perfect. AF on button, brilliant. The two info buttons, I understand. This thing up here is a little bit small, a little bit fiddly. Um, but otherwise, quality, bracket buttons, more FN1 buttons and PV buttons. But in terms of just ergonomics and body of feel, this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. I'm trying to, stay, I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to stay cool on this one. Like I'm saying, this is good because, I'd, or is it good just because the other stuff is so crap? Like the seven thousand and the five thousand are just utter. They're just toys that you would just throw away. This. Ah, ah, ah. If the sensor images, if the images from the sensor come out to be as good as what I've been hearing, this looks like a highely recommended camera. It's just because a camera body is just as important as the sensor. Having a good body which is weatherproof, which is solid, which feels good, which has the buttons in the right place, which isn't a plasticky, plasticky toy, is so valuable and just so much. Uh, long lasting so this feels this instantly feels like especially once you get a grip on an additional grip this feels like a camera that you could happily be using for five six years the d7000s and co are stuff that you'd use for a year and a half two years and just go i think i'll upgrade to a full frame and then you get the d600 and you go a shot one wedding with it I think I'll sell it and I'll upgrade to the D800. So th it's this, then the D810 are the only cameras from Nikon that I would totally recommend. Well, the D800 is good as well, but like the D810 is the latest. APS-C wise, this is just so right. The back screen, I don't like. I don't, this, this feels breakable. Like, they've used very good quality um, metal. It is solid, but it's just a thing which you, you're just, and then you just cover it in fingerprints and all that kind of stuff. It's not nearly as intuitive as the Panasonic GH4, which is simple, just boom, out, there it goes. Boom, out, in it goes. Like, so you can either have it so it's right at the back and you can view everything that you need there, or you can go, I'm going to protect the, the, the screen and bump it in there. That's it, nice. And if you're like, oh, I need to shoot from below, you've got it all the way there. Shoot from above, I've got it all the way there. I can do a full selfie video. This fully articulating screen, very, very good. I love it. Even though it feels light and cheap, because it's all connected just by one bit there, it feels absolutely fine. It feels absolutely fine to play around with. The screen on this feels a little bit difficult to pull out, a little bit hard there, and just like like you're just not doing it right. So I would say if you're using this, just keep it in there. Just keep it in there. The the one or two times where you're shooting right above and you need it up there, it, uh, I don't think you'll feel comfortable doing it. And a lot of shots from below. Damn, I might use that actually. Would I, would I use that? I, for my property work, a lot of time I shoot from the belly area. Not from the hip, but from the belly area. And that bit there, that could be handy. Let's see. If I'm shooting here and I can get the, the spirit level on, that, it's, mm, is it handier than that? Is it, okay, it's a tiny bit handy. Tiny bit handy, but I'm not going much further than saying more than a tiny bit handy. Um, yeah, if it was a fully articulating screen, that would be even better. I would like that even more. Um, but, uh, <sighs> XQD card, difficult to find. I, in here we've got the 32 megabyte, no, 32 gigabytes, 95 megabits, megabytes, megabits? Megabytes a second, ultra three 
class 10 super duper um, thing. Yeah. I am digging the body. Digging it a lot. Kind of thinking. Like my current workhorse is the Nikon is the Panasonic GH4. There's a big difference inside. This is a lot heavier, a lot bigger. Oh, but feels like that's a, that's a good. You can I can happily finger this camera with one finger. That feels very comfortable. Panasonic GH4. Yeah, it's gonna slip off. You know that that's that that handle is. Uh, not, not as good, but it, it feels good. Yeah, Panasonic still, still feels good. This is not coming off my finger. That's totally solid on, which is good. So that means that like the grip is really good. The body feels really good. Oh, the leathery bits on it feel good as well. Doing good, right? I'm gonna gonna get busy taking some photos. See how they come out. Stick in mode. Stick in aperture mode. Always at 2.8, at 16. Nice lens. See how this goes. So yeah, that, this is just my first impressions of a raw Nikon D500. So far, so good. More reviews coming up. Yikes. Yikes. That's, that is a... That's a machine gun. One last thing is that if you are on my photography channel, you may not know that I've got two other channels. One is my exercise channel, which you can check out, which is Don Bauer Exercise. Uh, I think the actual name is just youtube.com forward slash Don Bauer. And I've also got another one on this channel. Uh, so this is, I've got Dom's Talks. And a lot of that is going to be about, well, me, Dealing with my first ever newborn baby, uh, little Logan Bauer, uh, born on the 4th of September, uh, and so I'm, I'm learning to be a dad. So it's all my mistakes and all the things which I'm learning which are quite useful. So if you want to see more about little Logan and how he's getting on, check out Dom's talks. And if you want to see, oh I've also got Dom's flights as well. So uh, again I'm doing a lot of stuff flying my DJI Phantom uh, around the places. Uh, and also going through the, the process of getting the, li the license to do it commercially. So if you want to see how I'm doing that, check out the Dom's Flights channel as well. I should put all the links to down below. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.